for a game like this. They put it into perspective. There is 5,500 students here this evening. Undergraduate at Gonzaga, 6,000. The tip controlled by the number two team in the country, Gonzaga, and we are underway from Provo and what could well end up being the game of the year in the West Coast Conference. Killian Tilly's going to take the first shot in and out on a three. And we expect, as you referenced just a moment ago, up and down, high-paced, high-scoring, a lot of threes. That one came up short. Alex Barcelo, Jake Toulson tried to save it inbounds, but the Zags have it, and they will push tempo. Tilly, meanwhile, is trailing. He was down on the play on the defensive end. Corey Kispert knocks down the first bucket of the night. Corey Kispert is so on balance, so tough. Able to attack the center of the paint. Another team particularly deep. Look Part at of the that. defense here on the on-ball screen. Have six foot ten Killy and Tilly show out and force the ball all the way back to the mid-court line. TJ Hawes, another one of those BYU seniors. Backs down his first shot of the night. And BYU's on the board. Philip Petrushev, who is the leading scorer for this Gonzaga team, missed his first attempt down low. Oz tried to bounce it to a teammate. That went off a foot of a Gonzaga defender. So BYU will keep the ball. Mark Few, 21 years in Spokane. And I don't think a lot of people expected this to be the case, but this may be one of the best teams he's ever had. And it might be one. You lose your entire front court from a season ago, who both of them are thriving at the next level. Uh, and yet this, this team has not skipped a beat. It's a testament to him, his coaching staff. And it's a reason why, if you look at the last 10 years in college basketball, the Zags have the best winning percentage in the entire country. The only child who's had a tremendous career. He went through his senior night festivities. Jo Joel Ayayi with a wild shot and a miss. I mean, Gonzaga likes to play up-tempo. I don't think Mark Few wants that shot. And now we might have a timing issue. Oh, we got blood. Oh. Uh, so Toulson, who tried, he tried to have that taken care of just a moment ago. And I think he's going to have to come out of the game, go back to the locker room. Connection that we saw so many years ago is still true with this group right now. All right, so after a delay, Toulson went back very quickly, got his cut patched up. But he is uh, out of the game for a moment. BYU getting the ball inbounded to Connor Harding, who just came in for Toulson. And Harding stepped out of bounds and turned it over. Well, and going to go back to the bench. Not the stat line that you want. Five seconds into the game and one turnover one turn back to the bench. Now there's Toulson. You, we'll see it again, but he's got some sort of Band-Aid on his right cheek. Ryan Woolridge, one of those grad transfers for Gonzaga, has just done a terrific job. Ayayi bounces it to Woolridge, who comes up well short. Ball sort of pinballs around, and BYU has it. Pace of play is good. Efficiency, though, has not been good. And these, both these teams need to settle down a little bit. Don't you think sometimes a game like this, with all the emotions coming in, that was a beautiful move from T.J. Oz. And now a steal. But yes. Apparently not out of bounds, so Gonzaga's going to keep it. It's so loud, it's hard to hear the officials. Watch this move and the footwork. Stop. Big man's got his hands up. You step right back underneath. T.J. Hawes, who was just tremendous down the stretch the other night against Santa Clara. Tilly gets the bounce pass from Ayayi and scores with contact. I think that's where they could really hurt BYU in the on-ball screens and because of their size and athleticism, then rolling and getting to the rim. Childs got the pass from Hawes. I said, hey, you did a pretty good job of it at your end. We're going to come back and bring it to our guy. Now Petrusha down low. He got fouled before the shot. You can't hear the whistle in here. You cannot. I can't. And you have good hearing. <laughs> My wife will tell you that I, I never listen. <laughs>
Petrushev, one dribble and offensive foul. Do you know how you, uh, how tough you have to be to be TJ Hawes and stand on that train track? There's a lot of bigs that don't want to take that kind of contact. Gets his feet set and absorbs it perfectly. Petrushev tried to avoid him, but couldn't. So now BYU ball. And Hawes, he was looking to pass. He'll shoot instead. Look at how quickly, though, all five guys. A very little offensive rebound opportunity. He threw another charge. <laughs> Two times in a row for TJ Hawes. Yeah, uh, yeah, he just dips his shoulder and extends out that elbow. Hawes put himself in the right position. Now you see Mark View telling his team settle down, which he didn't have to say all that often. I mean, Gonzaga is used to arenas like this, atmospheres like this, being the target. Childs spins back middle and elevates. A little too strong. The defense by Killian Tilly. Tilly on this end. It's been a struggle for Killian Tilly to stay healthy. When he is healthy, there aren't many better players in the country. More good TJ Haas defense. Childs shoots a three, no good. So I think you had it pegged in those first couple minutes. Maybe the adrenaline of the atmosphere. Some of those shots that we, we're used to seeing go down aren't going down. Timmy, I thought he traveled. No call, but he missed the shot. How about T.J. Haas? Couple charges, couple steals, couple rebounds. He's been all over the floor. Toulson's going to have to have a big night, though, if they're going to win this game. Yeah. And he turned it over. Ayayi on the move. Woolridge with that quick step, but Haas was there to knock it out of bounds. Well, it's been really the defense so far. This year, it's been the offense for BYU, particularly at home, that's been the signature. We'll talk about that one. Inside the WCC. Well, Gonzaga's got so many streaks going in conference play. Overall win streaks, road win streaks, WCC winning streaks. Uh, this conference has been a good basketball conference this year and a lot of years. Well, because of the loss to San Diego State today, they, they now own the current Longest win streak in college basketball. They have the longest home win streak in college basketball They have the longest road win streak in college basketball. That's how elite Gonzaga has been And again just to emphasize the point this year in the WCC and it's, it's true a lot of years, but I think especially this year This has been a an ultra competitive league that win streak is impressive well, You saw it the other night in San Francisco who's played Gonzaga really well in, in two games had the lead at halftime in both those two contests and Todd Golden has done a tremendous job there Randy Bennett has his st. Mary's team poised to make the NCAA tournament just as Mark Pope does It's they could get th three teams in the field this year They could get three teams in the top half of the field the yeah. top half of the bracket T.J. Hawes was playing with a lot of energy in these first few minutes Tonight, starting his 131st consecutive game. He's never missed a game, and he's never not started a game in his four-year BYU career. What a great double of Yoli Childs, though. Drew Timmy and Admon Gilder did a superb job of A, force him to catch the ball off the block, and then watch the double team. They don't foul. He takes a negative dribble. They just put their hands up. They're disruptive. And it's caught by somebody in the third row. It's the second time they've made it tough on Childs in a little different way. That'd be interesting to watch as this game goes on. Kispert thought about the catch and shoot. Instead, the true freshman Drew Timmy back to Kispert for three. No good. One of the things BYU is doing really well right now is rebounding at their defensive end. They're not allowing second chance points for Gonzaga. Toulson with Gavin Baxter in for the first time. We'll talk about him a little bit. They lob it to Baxter, and the ball sort of got pinned against the rim. 
Haas once again there to get a hand on the ball and at least knock it out of bounds. Sometimes it's hard to, to watch, and T.J. Haas is coming out of the game, but it's hard to categorize winning basketball plays. Yeah. But T.J. Haas has made a ton of winning basketball plays early in this game. The two charges, the deflection in transition, that deflection forcing Gonzaga to have to play in the half court. Well, he won't spend many minutes on the bench. He's there to get a quick rest right now. Admon Gilder into the game, hits the three. And you talk about this environment and the size of it. Admon Gilder's played at Rupp Arena with 20,000. And he is ready to go. That's the first three made on either side. We expect we'll see a lot more of those. But so far, the three-point shooting has been a little colder than usual. Baxter a couple dribbles. Got cut off. Shot clock under 10. Jake Toulson, long three. Too strong. And the rebound, Childs comes up with it, and he missed the layup. Really uncontested, very unusual for Childs. Now Timmy somehow saved it inbounds. That was a good play. Gilder will shoot another three, and that one's good. Uh, this is the type of game where Admon Gilder thrives off the energy in the building. I saw him so many times down at Texas A&M covering the SEC. Step up and have big moments. Started a ton of games in the SEC, has been more than willing to come to Gonzaga and come off the bench and has been happy with his role and has really thrived in that role with the Zags. That's a foul against Gonzaga. And, and, and I think that goes back to Mark Few. I mean, we, how many transfers have we seen come in over the years and either have to wait their time by redshirt in a year or even the grad transfer that we've seen now? And there's no promises. You know, the promise is, you know, not, hey, you come play for me, you're going to start, you're going to play 30 minutes again. Not, no, that's that's not the message that Mark Few delivers to players that are thinking about transferring. The question is, are you willing to sacrifice your game for our team's success? Do you understand what this program is about? Do you understand how committed you have to be and what the expectation is? And when I talked to Admon, I said, hey, what's the difference this year? And he goes, yeah, Sean, everybody in Spokane expects us to win every single night. And everybody in our locker room expects us to win every night. It's different. Not a lot of places across the country that can have that feeling. Free throws ended an 8 nothing run for the Zags. Petrushev back in. That was a strong move off the glass. The Zags leading scorer for the year. We mentioned this during the St. Mary's game, but the base and how strong he keeps his feet underneath him. He can absorb contact, feel it, and then spin off. Not many guys... In this league can stop him down low. No one. One on one, there's nobody. Good cut by Haas and a good pass from Zach Selyus. Well, it looks like both teams starting to rev up the offenses a little bit after the cold shooting in the first five minutes or so. Now a whistle away for the ball. That's a foul against BYU. And one of the things the Zags do really well because of their size and, and the point of emphasis in this day and age of analytics and shooting three-point shots and all those things, and, you know, it was a really good shot too, really two feet away from the hoop. Yeah. And the Zags can pound it in the post with anybody in the country, and they have multiple guys they can play through. That time, Drew Timmy's sheer size created that foul opportunity. Petrushev off the inbound, went to the left hand and missed the shot. Mark Pope wants his team to push tempo. Haas finds an open shooter, Harding three, and that one no good, but the tip in is good. That's Gavin Baxter. That's his first made field goal all year. Of now, the year. Of the games. This is only his fifth game. Of the year. That's his first basket and first points of the season. It was in pretty spectacular fashion. <laughs> Haven't watched her play. Gonzaga fans, you'll like this reference. She's the John Stockton of pick and rolls in women's basketball. Phenomenal. Monday would be a good night to watch Sabrina for the first time if you haven't seen her play. Playing just a few miles from where she grew up. And I'm just going to say, I'll guarantee she gets those nine rebounds <laughs> on Monday. The Zags, by the way, have found themselves in rhythm offensively. They've made three out of the last five shots they've attempted. T.J. Hawes stripped it away, and it went off the leg of Drew Timmy. T.J. Hawes... You know, the stat sheet doesn't look so full yet. It probably will by the end of the night, but man, is he playing well. Two charges, one steal, one assist, three rebounds, six points. It's pretty good. I mean, you're saying it's not full. I think that's pretty good for, uh, you know, nine minutes into the game. 
Hawes had his oh, pass defense. swatted away by Timmy. Hawes, kind of that leaner three, he likes that shot. It's not an easy shot. Missed that one. That's a foul. No whistle. Timmy got Baxter in the air. He'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, that was a foul, though, on your only child showing on that screen. All year long, somebody shows out like that makes contact with the guy dribbling the basketball. That's a foul. For BYU, I guess it's good news that it wasn't called a foul. Their big men are in some foul trouble here in the first half. Timmy makes the first of two. Big Monday starts with a really huge game of the ACC. Two top 15 teams. Louisville and Florida State down at Tallahassee. That's a real good one. 7 Eastern. It'll be live on ESPN. It'll stream on the app. And at Kansas, Oklahoma State at Paul Gallen at 9 Eastern. All coming up on Big Monday. Yadoka has a bookie. You mentioned their wins. How unbelievable was he this afternoon? 11 of 13 from the field. Finished with a career high 19 rebounds to go with 23 points. Tolson for three, and BYU's finally made one. Their first of the night. And they didn't get him involved. That's only his second shot. Yeah, he's got to be greedy. Petrushev, nice catch and score. Yeah, you're trying to stay on the high side, but then when you get pushed up that lane a little bit, creates that seam to dump it down. Beautiful pass. Well, both Lee and Celius have two personals, so Gavin Baxter is going to have to give Mark Pope some minutes off the bench. Childs makes his move and scores. Here we go. Here comes the offense. High low, and that was TJ Hawes to knock it away. Toulson back to Hawes, who finds Barcelo for three. That one no good. Offensive rebound, and Gilder just smashed into Hawes. Fans didn't like it. That was totally unintentional. Hey, T.J. Hawes is everywhere. Well, if you want to be ranked and you want to have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament, you got to bring it at the defensive end of the floor. And for the last couple seasons, that maybe hasn't been the calling guard of BYU. They're much better they're more committed at that end of the floor and they're still good from out there Colby Lee just back in the game with two fouls grabs the offensive rebound Giles double team didn't matter That's a deep. <laughs> Petrushev missed the layup and I think again you got to give Hawes some credit for that. Listen to this place. It's the first half. Childs. <laughs> Timeout. Gonzaga have a 21-18 first half lead. Well, and, and on the scouting report you have your knowns, right? We talked about the balance within Gonzaga and having seven guys. Averaging double figures for BYU. It is Haas. It is Childs. It is Toulson that need to play well. Haas and Childs have combined for 14 of their points. Killian Tilly, who's got that range, and the big man just so pure from the outside. People asked me earlier today, you know, who do you think the best prospect is for the next level for Gonzaga? If you put health and you take the health equation out of it, there's no doubt it's number 33. Killian Tilly. Six foot ten can stretch the floor beyond NBA range and has the ability to defend on ball screens. And the help is a huge question, and it's a fair question. Hawks had it stripped away. Here comes Ryan Woolridge, one of the fastest players in college troops. Childs got called for the foul there. I don't know. I thought he got all ball. Got to be smart when you put your hand there. Yeah. You know, and, and Warridge end to end is as quick as almost any guard in the country. No, he got his arm. He did. That's a good call. He did. Yeah, Ryan Woolridge has been a savior for this Gonzaga team. Tilly, nice catch. He tried to lob it up to his teammate who wasn't expecting the pass. Uh, he was lobbing that for Aaron Gordon. And Aaron Gordon <laughs> wouldn't have caught that one. Yeah, Phillips looking at him like, huh? Tulson crossover three.
That's why you said he's got to shoot more. Yep. He, he has. It's almost selfish if he doesn't shoot the ball. Does that make sense? It does. Like he has to. He has to understand his place on this team and what they require from him if they're going to try to knock off number two. Ooh, I think he was thinking about shooting another one. This time back to Childs, who's been a good three-point shooter. That one comes up short. Ayayi's pass was kicked out of bounds. And that'll send us to a timeout. Selfish if he doesn't shoot the ball. Jake Toulson, who's had a kind of a strange guy to lead the NBA in assists at the age of 35 since Steve Nash. I feel like that is an underreported story right now that he is leading the league in assists. LeBron James, he's always been a great passer, but I find that to be pretty remarkable. You know, everybody always said he had a lot of Magic Johnson in his game, and there's no question that he does. Tilly, the loose ball went right to Kispert, who lays it in. Kispert not settling. That's the first offensive rebound for Gonzaga this evening. So far, BYU's done a good job on the glass overall, and that is not a strength of the Cougars. You're right. They are plus four right now in that category. If they can keep that, I think that's that really tells you a lot. What a little move from Toulson, but then the shot somehow didn't go down. He's claiming he got hit on the top of the head. There was no whistle. Petrushev, they sort of dare him to shoot that, and he coolly knocks it down. Yeah, it's kind of like a little bit of that defense that we saw the other night by USF yeah. when Jimmy Dykes and Fran Fraschilla were no play-by-play -play guy. It made me nervous. You were in London. It, Stop. It, it made me nervous. You it were did. in London. It Otherwise, you'd be there. It's bad job security when there's no play-by-play -play guy. Pause to Childs. So you're here tonight, and I'm listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> Toulson short on the three. BYU continues from the outside to struggle. Celius came up with a loose ball, but then gave it right back. Tilly Petrushev runs the floor. Childs knocked it away. A lot of contact going on. Not a lot of whistles. They're letting him play. Celius three. Good! There is no question that Gonzaga is going to be tested tonight. Kispert's three. And BYU wants to push again. Oz goes right by Kispert, who did a pretty good job actually of staying with him, but Childs tipped in the miss. I, I thought that was still on the arm. But you credit the effort. I mean, Childs is working his way in there, trying to be active. Yeah, he's got 10 already in this game. Look at the mismatch underneath. Yeah, Petrusha takes advantage with a foul. Right. Shouldn't take that long to figure out. He's got a distinct size advantage underneath. Yeah, six foot ten versus almost seven feet effort, but it's six two versus six eleven. Yeah. Petrushev has been a better free throw shooter. Hawes kind of flung it up there, and Baxter found a way to get the ball and lay it in. Do you give him an assist on it? I say no. <laughs> I guarantee you that the statistician here at BYU is going to give him an assist. Uh, they have him with two assists. We'll see. They gave him the assist. Oh, yeah. That was a guarantee. That's unbelievable. Baxter called for his second personal. So I got three of the big players for BYU, all with two fouls. You see that in baseball, though. Like, yeah. guy, like is it an error? Is it not to preserve the no hitter? Ah, it's an error. It's Buster Posey. Give him a hit. <laughs> Petrushev. No, no sign stealing though here tonight. None. You want to talk about that? Plus, if we <laughs> beat on a garbage can, nobody would hear us anyway. It's too loud. <laughs> Phillips got 10 already in this game. One of the top scorers in the West Coast Conference. Missed the second. 
We still have five minutes to go in the first half. Haas kept that pivot foot down. I think this is a matchup where he could actually utilize his athleticism and quickness. I think he can drive Kispert. Force the defense to have to help, and then you can find shooters on the outside. Shot clock's winding down. Haas slips it. And that little shot goes. Kobe Lee, Kobe Lee has a good touch. Those are not easy shots. No. He's not a super athletic big man, but he can make that shot. Petrushev went down. And he's grabbing his back. Yeah, he, it, it's something. He took an awkward step. And I don't know if he got hit in the back and that caused it or what? Hit it properly. Yeah, we've, got, we've got great officials I, here, but they, that, they missed that one. I, I wonder if they saw. I, I think they did. They had to. They played it on the Jumbotron in here. <laughs> they have a really big video board here. So BYU ball, that is a huge break, I think, for BYU. Well, now, what contact are we going to deem? You know, I mean, well, Yola Childs makes a nice play, but as emotions get up in this game, is there is there a moment where that comes back into play? I mean, Philip Petrushev is sitting on the bench right now. You think he's happy that he's on the bench? You think that he's happy that that wasn't called? I guarantee you he's not. No. Childs is a good shooter, not a great free throw shooter. Missed the and, chance for the three point play. And, and my, my final point on it, and I'll get off of it, I promise. But you can tag a big man without lunging and giving a forearm shiver in the back. Forearm shiver is a WWE reference. No, you're right. Yeah, it's a good point you make. Shot clock winding down. Ayayi on the move, kind of off balance, missed the shot. He's had a rough first half. Joel Ayayi. I think generally Gonzaga's defense has been good. Yeah. They've been really strong at the defensive end, especially contesting the three-point shots. Childs, that one was contested. It goes down anyway at the end of the shot clock. Yola Childs was a special talent. He missed the first matchup between these two teams. He's got 15 in the first half of this game. Down low, that was not a great entry pass. The scouting report defense is carrying on for BYU. This place will erupt on another made basket. Maybe a three. It was ready to erupt. Connor Harding couldn't knock it down. Kispert shot fake. He got Childs in the air. And he's going to shoot maybe three free throws when we come back to Provo. Well, we wanted to take a moment. It was a tough week for the Gonzaga basketball family this week. But I, I thought it was a flagrant one at minimum. <laughs> Look, big no call. By the way. I can understand you say, hey, I don't want to flag one on that. That's fine. Have you seen some of the flagrant ones that have been assessed this year in college basketball? Kispert knocks down the free throw. Remember, he got fouled by Yoli Childs shooting a jump shot before he went to break. And BYU has got some major foul issues in this first half for a team that is not particularly deep. It's three free throws for Kispert. Baxter's got two. Childs now has two. Lee has two. Celius has two. That's all their big men. And Kispert made all three free throws. Well, in, in similar kind of fashion, Gonzaga's ability to kind of wear you out over the course of the game because of the depth that they have as far as scorers go and the size that they possess. It may not show up here in the first half, but those fouls will continue to weigh on them into the second half. They're playing with two of those four players with two fouls on the floor right now. Tulsa three the way outside. Got to take it because he can make it. He's got nine. Good pass. Patricia, though, had it stripped away. Marcelo quickly into the front court. Tulsa again. No. I thought that one was going in. Woolridge got fouled by Barcelo. That's what Ryan Woolridge does. Number 
one, he's an excellent defensive point guard. Number two, he puts so much pressure on the other team's defense with that speed and quickness. He has really started to come into his own. I mean, he's had a great season. The last five games, he's shooting 62% from the field. Your point guard. Now, a lot of those are coming in transition. He's very aggressive. Last game out, he had 12 points, seven assists, five rebounds, and five steals. Did he just airball that free throw? Yes. Wow. I'll stop giving him compliments now. <laughs> You're on your own, Ryan. <laughs> Perfect. That took some guts to make that second one. Well, Alex Barcelo also with two. That's five BYU players with two fouls already in this game. So he goes to the bench. Pause for three. Good. And they get going from the outside. And we talked about, especially in this building, it is special. Number one three-point shooting team in the country. And now a foul. Against who? Connor Harding? Yeah. Harding for BYU. Well, he gets you to go underneath the screen. If you're going underneath on ball screens and you're not showing up uh, from the big and, and be guarding the screener and showing, they're going to knock down threes all night long. I don't care how far away you are, you cannot go under. Double bonus for Gonzaga. So Tilly's got two free throws. Let's make the point again. Killian Tilly, we've, he's been around for a long time. He played in Gonzaga's national championship game against North Carolina. Played big minutes in that game. If he's healthy, which he has not been very frequently, one of the best, most talented players in college basketball. Yeah, he's got nine in the first half here. And you take away the Santa Clara game where he got injured. In the last four games he's played, he's averaging 21-plus points per game. And he's phenomenal. And, and not only can he score, but he can really pass the ball. Out of bounds off of Gonzaga. So BYU's going to inbound the ball for the baseline. Shot clock down at 10. Toulson with the big man Petrushev on him. Steps back for the three. Well sure. Well defended. It was. Now on this end. Kind of fumbled the ball away. Mark Pope wanted a timeout. Nobody could hear him. So T.J. Hawes will shoot the two. <laughs> Zaga basically is going to hold for the final shot. Man, listen to this place. Gilder, three, too strong, rebound knocked around, Toulson knocks it out of bounds, point nine on the game clock. For some reason, they didn't turn the shot clock off, even though there was more time on the shot clock than the game clock. They're going to get Baxter in to protect the rim. That's a good guy to have guarding the inbound passer. Tilly had it fumbled away, went to Gilder, who heaved it up. I'm not sure it was going to count anyway. The second time in as many games, the number two team in the country will go to the half with a deficit. This one, though, is a little different. The environment. But BYU's got to be, in some ways, just thrilled. They survived foul trouble in the first half. You saw those shooting numbers. They made six threes. They took 19 of them. They didn't shoot the ball particularly well from the outside, and yet here they are with the ball and the lead as we start the second half.
With Gonzaga's winning streak, WCC win streak, road win streak, all on the line, and Yoli Childs and BYU want to end those streaks here tonight. Beautiful slip screen, dive, dive right to the basket. Yoli Childs understands space, utilizes his strong shoulders to finish. Tilly off the glass. No second half against USF, who took over? He did. Yeah. If Gonzaga's going to win this game, just as much as we talk about Toulson needing to be aggressive and shooting the ball for BYU, Killian Tilly needs to step up his level of aggressiveness as far as scoring the basketball. Different kind of pass from Hawes to Childs, and this time the only Childs missed the shot. Kispert down low to Tilly, who does have low post moves. It's not just that he's a big man who shoots from the outside. He can score in all three levels. He can play with back to the basket. He can shoot in the mid-range, turn and face, and elevate up over the top, and then he can stretch you. Just a super talented player, Killian Tilly. They double-team Childs, who almost throws it away. They had some success doing that in the first half. Hawes, tough, contested shot. He's a tough shot taker, but he's also a tough shot maker. 13 for T.J. Hawes. Childs with Ayayi just sort of threw it right to him. I don't know if he didn't see him or what. Barcelo in the corner, passed up the three, and kind of got cut off. BYU will reset. Nice. Match on, underneath yeah, he can't get the ball to Lee. He's trying to guard Colby Lee. Toulson for three, way outside. <laughs> Timeout, Mark Few. Blue season title, Gonzaga has already clinched at least a share. But if BYU wins this game, you're talking about a team that's in the 7, 8, 9 seed range, somewhere in there. Maybe a chance to vault up several spots higher than that. Yeah, could easily, should easily be at least a 6, maybe even a 5. And now you, you give yourself a better chance of advancing out of the first weekend. Much better chance, I would say. So huge stakes for BYU in this game. Even if they can't win that regular season title, great Two defense by Lee. Yeah. I mean, he's walling up and just forcing Petrusha to take contested shots. What a pass from Childs to Lee. So he played good defense on one end and then hustled to get down on the offensive end. Tilly will score and no foul call. Man, I thought he got pushed. He 100% got pushed. No, that was a clear foul. They didn't call it. Well, think about this, though. BYU right now is plus six points in the paint. On Lee for three. <laughs> Might be BYU's night. Wow. He's playing like he did in Maui. He was phenomenal in Maui. He was. But that was without Yoli. Tilly makes his move, missed the shot. This time they call the foul, and man, he hit the floor hard. Maybe right on that right side. That's going to be the third foul against Childs. And a shot. I was saying this, think about this. BYU is plus six in the paint, plus two on the glass, plus four in second chance points, and they're plus five in the turnover battle. That's a good recipe. Tilly, who scored all of the Gonzaga points since halftime, missed the first free throw, has a second one coming. Look at what he's shooting into. <laughs> there are almost 6,000, not people here, there are almost 20,000 people here. There are almost 6,000 students in the building tonight. And students are what makes it special and makes it great. You and I will be in the kennel next weekend. Yeah, there are lots of times where I think the kennel is the loudest venue in college basketball. Fog Allen, Cameron, and there, are, there are several candidates. But I would venture a guess that tonight in this building will be the loudest college basketball arena of this season.
It's been electric. I mean, we can't hear the whistle when it's being blown out on the floor. Gilder for three. Way short. He knew it. Woolridge, though, keeps it alive. And now maybe an advantage for the Zags. Kiss for a three. That one's good. Much needed. His feet were set. Woolridge, an outstanding job identifying Kisper. Game's a long way from being over. Well, yeah, there's almost 16 minutes left. Long way. <laughs> Pause. Fell down. Stumbled. Woolridge, two on one, gives it up, and Gilder lays it in. Just like that, a quick 5-0 run. By Gonzaga. Their offense, it, it's not going to stop. And they're going to look to get out in transition. You can ill afford to have turnovers. That's why that turnover number of only having six turnovers prior to that one was so huge through the first half. Colby Lee, shot clock winding down. Working his way a little closer, and he gets fouled. Well, the sophomore from Meridian, Idaho, he's been a factor tonight for BYU. He's going to win a big win and big sweep over Colorado. They used a 20-3 to run in the second half. They've won 9 out of 11. But Bobby Hurley's essentially done the same thing at ASU. I mean, so now you think about the Pac-12, and they got five teams in, according to Joe Lenardi right now. I think the one that's interesting to keep an eye on is USC. Uh, they play at Utah tomorrow. I mean, it has been a remarkable turnaround for Arizona State. Remember, they lost to St. Mary's out of the West Coast Conference at home, essentially. Not quite home, but essentially. By what, 50? Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Tilly is trying to take over. That time came up short. Good defense by Gilder. Really have to contain the dribble. I mean, that's a, that's a big part of Gonzaga's defense here in the second half. They've got to tighten up the bolts and not allow dribble penetration to break them down. Haas knew he was way off. Now he's trying to get a foul call. Woolridge double teamed. Scramble for the ball. Comes away with it. Celius rips it away from him. Just took it from him. Tulson three. Yes! That may be the first Dikembe Mutombo finger wag that Colby Lee's ever given in his career. Still a foul. Where's Woolworths driving, though, right there? I mean, driving right to the out-of-bounds line, but just outstanding effort on the floor, and then Tulson at the other end. He has been outstanding from beyond the arc. He's got 15 on the game. Petrusha against that backdrop, which is so tough in the second half for visiting teams with the students here. Students are what make college basketball special, whether yep. it's the kennel, whether it's the show, whether it's the rock here tonight. <laughs> that is a heck of a scene. The Cameron crazies, you could go conference by conference and, and the rowdy reptiles down at Florida like, there, there, There's a bunch of student sections that are just phenomenal if you try to rank them you're inviting people to yell at you But the fans here They came to the game Thursday against Santa Clara the students exited the building and then immediately got back in line for this game Two hours before the game we walked in here and there were 5,000 students already they had to use the overflow section. Celius down low had a shot blocked. Great play by Drew Timmy. Look at the big man Tilly lead the break. Gilder dumps what it a up. Pass. Timmy run of the floor. Great job run of the floor. But Admont Gilder was really stuck and a small window to drop that off. And great court vision and awareness to get that assist. Big sequence block in one end when it looked like maybe a BYU layup. Toulson gets fouled by Gilbert. That Montgilder watched the attacker. Multiple Cougars going around him, almost four. And Drew Tilly just runs the lane. Nobody accounts for him. And he's able to finish. Dangerous inbounds pass. Alex Barcelo has not scored in this game. Got 
Haas on the bench. You got Childs on the bench. Toulson goes by Tilly. Switch to the left hand. Hits the floor. We'll go to the free throw line. He's already got maybe stitches. Certainly a big band-aid, a big cut on his cheek. On his senior night. All of his made field goals this evening have been from beyond the arc. BYU a team that does not get to the free throw line very often. And a lot of that's because of style of play. Yeah. They're very comfortable living beyond the three-point line and then scoring and pushing in transition. Jake, who was a freshman at BYU, went to Utah Valley just down the road to play for Mark Pope. Pope gets the head job here. Brad transfers as a senior. He's had a great senior year. Woolridge, what a move, but then the shot was deflected, but he got fouled. And he's in a stare down with some of those BYU fans. Got to be careful on both sides. On a night where emotions are certainly running high. First one good for Ryan Woolridge. Tomorrow, Sunday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on ESPN. Very cool piece. D Wade, life unexpected. A lot of behind the scenes, never before seen footage. The life career of Dwayne Wade. Tomorrow, 9 Eastern, Sunday. Saw available on ESPN Plus as well. I saw a couple of promos for that on NBA Countdown. Just Forget about him leaving Miami, coming back. And Gilder with the steal, and he'll go all the way to dunk it home. Now, one way Gonzaga gets back into this game and can close this deficit quickly is live ball turnovers that allow for runouts. That's the second one in the last couple minutes. Baxter down low, tough pass. Nice dish to Hawes was wide open and just came up way short. Here's Gilder for three. Off to the side. Woolridge hustles and saved it in. What a save. Kesberg for three. Short. Here's Barcelo from the corner. No good. Composure. Up and down. Composure. You got to play with some composure though. But the fans here at Provo just love 65 57 BYU looking for the upset again in the NCAA tournament with a home win and a signature win for Mark Pope in year one. And the Zags, their focus is on the one line. And Zag has won 40 consecutive 4 0, 40 straight West Coast Conference regular season games. It takes a special effort to try to knock off this team. So far, BYU's been up to that challenge. Shot clock at 15 out of the timeout. Kispert for three. He thought he had it. Timmy hustles after the offensive rebound. Kispert underneath got fouled, and that's going to be number four against Colby Lee. BYU's foul problems are getting more acute, and that guy has played really well. He's going to have to go to the bench. Well, we mentioned this in the first half. Remember, we talked about it, and we said, hey, the fouls right now, we have to remember late in the second half, or we're at that midway portion. And I'd attack him right here. Kispert off the catch. The tip up is good. Ayayi crashing the offensive boards. I said he was going to have to come out. Colby Lee still on the floor with four fouls. And the lead is down to six. And if I mark few, next possession, I'm going right after him. He's played outstanding post defense tonight for BYU. Not to mention his offensive production as well. Oz found Harding from the right side. That one no good. He's had some open looks. Quickly Gonzaga into the front court. Here's Ryan Woolridge all the way. Missed the layup. Pause. They never blew the whistle. He tried to draw the foul on the three. He leaned into Timmy. No foul. Kispert on this end. That one's no good. He's been a little off. Gonzaga, though, starting to get a lot of second chances. 
Timmy right over Childs scores. And now Mark Pope wants a timeout for BYU. Drew Timmy's given Gonzaga a nice jolt here in the second half. Haas has played an outstanding game, though. You look at six assists, a team high there, 13 points. You get a guy up like that, you have the lead. Understand the clock is your friend a little bit. You don't want to slow it down because you want to stay true to who you are. But yeah. you can ill afford to have an empty possession like that. Child's nice catch and scores with a foul. That's a great possession out of the timeout. Yep. You talk about a team going to a timeout. Mark Pope telling his guys, hey, settle it down. Let's get the ball underneath to Yoli Childs. They've seen your three-quartering that high. Too much space. Childs has 19 now. He and Hawes both have been relatively quiet. In this second half, Childs makes the free throw. Hilo Gonzaga style, and Timmy with a very difficult catch, had it knocked away. Jake Tulsa, the guy who comes away with it. Oh, you got to drive this. Yeah. He does. He draws the foul. Yeah, he's saying, I don't need to come out of the game, even though he's got three now. Well, I don't think that's the reason he's to help side defense right now. And the way that they're playing, there's been some mismatches. And guys have been put out of position. And that time, you know, Ayayi cannot guard Goli Childs. No. So as, as a team, you have to have awareness that there's a mismatch. The double team has been good at times, but you got to bring it quicker and get to them as, like, fire alarms are going off and you got to get out of the building. That's how quick you got to get onto that double team. A teaching moment for Mark Few with his freshman, Drew Timmy. Yoli Childs, second all-time rebounder in this program's history, sixth all-time leading scorer in BYU history, playing his final home game here tonight. And listen, there's people looking at the record and going, man, how did this team lose seven games? Yeah, they've been discombobulated all season long. They played up in Spokane without Yoli. They played at St. Mary's without Yoli. He had a finger injury. He had to sit out the first nine games on paperwork, which was just foolish. Tilly and Tilly back in. Kispert drives it and lays it in. What a move by Corey Kispert. So strong. Did a big drive and a dunk the other night, and that one, he didn't finish with a dunk, but just as effective. Not just an outside shooter. Haas had his shot partially deflected. Ayayi's going to go all the way, and he lays it in with a foul. Chance for a three-point play. Gonzaga doing what it does better than almost anybody in the country, finding ways to score in the paint. We talk about their size, but their guards and their willingness to attack the rim ever present in the last two possessions. This in transition, reaching, grabbing, doesn't matter. The speed of Ayayi to see that seam and attack it. He's sort of come to life. It has not been a great game for Joel Ayayi. He completes the three-point play. The lead is down to four, and Ayayi's got five now. Sophomore from France. In this lineup on the floor, i got to try to find a way to get either Yoli Childs or Tulsa in the ball. Childs, and he made the basket. They're not going to count the basket. They say the foul came before the shot. The whistle did come quickly. Again, a problem for the fans here who are reacting so demonstrably. They, they can't hear the whistle. That time we could. In those games, and you get you get assigned, and you're working in this job, and you think to yourself, man, that could be a really good game. You and I both circled this one and said it could be special. So far, it has been. Yeah. I think we're coming right down to the end. BYU is led by as many as 14 in the second half. Childs got Tilly in the air. That one wouldn't go down. That's two straight fouls against Killian Tilly in the last five seconds, and he's got four now. That's huge. Timmy's going to check back into the game. But Killian Tilly, so important to everything they do offensively. 
his feel for it. You can see him frustrated. If he just stays on his feet and doesn't leave his feet there, that's not a foul on him. But when you leave your feet like that, clearly a foul. And now he'll have to sit down. And you and Mark Pope were thinking right along the same lines because I think the BYU head coach called for the ball two straight times to go into Childs. So Tilly frustrated, he goes to the bench. First year, what a job Mark Pope has done. Through the injuries, the suspensions, the fits and starts, Childs missed both of them. That is a weakness in his game. Not a great free throw shooter. But yeah, he left his feet, had nowhere to go, and they call it travel. Yeah. You like the aggressiveness, you like the turn, but you got a jump stop on balance. Reverse pivot, Corey Kispert was wide open at the three-point line. The defense swarms and collapses on you. That's when you really got to jump stop and be on balance. 14 turnovers for Gonzaga for them. That's a high number. There's still more than eight minutes to go. Here's Toulson. He's played a heck of a game. Working one-on-one -on -one against Gilder. Trying to get closer to the basket. Good defense. Here come the Zags. Gilder, long three, short, but good hustle play by Woolridge. Ayayi steps back into a tough two. That one no good. Timmy offensive rebound with a foul. How about that for the freshman? The freshman that was one of the top State, 7 Eastern in the ACC, and then uh, the game that follows, let's go, win. Sabrina, should be really a great show, number three, number four in Palo Alto, Oregon, Stanford, Drew Timmy misses the free throw, so no three-point play, Gonzaga has used the glass to get back in this game, they were down 14 in the second half, the early minutes of the second half. Now a whistle and a foul, I think, away from the ball. Hey, you mentioned that Stanford-Oregon game, though, real yes, quick. Yes, yes. Pac-12 women's basketball is the best in the country. Conference from top to bottom. And you look at those two teams, Oregon State, UCLA, Arizona. This phenomenal season this year in women's college basketball for the Pac-12. Gonzaga's got a really good women's team. Yeah, they do. Hey, year in and year out. Kelly, Kelly Gray's, by the way, the head coach of Oregon, used to be the head coach of Gonzaga. We used to hang with him all the time. We did. He's too big for us now. Yeah, he doesn't return our calls, doesn't give us texts. I'm sure he's watching tonight, though. His son's on the team. That's one good reason. I mean, come on. Jake Toulson, BYU's in the bonus. Gonzaga's in the bonus. He's still got 7.42 to go. Free throws are going to play a big part. And who wins this WCC showdown? Toulson missed the second one. First time BYU's been ranked in almost a decade. Jimmer Fredette was playing for BYU. That one too strong. Kispert missed the three. It was right on line, though. Just a little flat. Yep. Last time until this week that BYU had been ranked, and perfect timing. The senior night with the Zags coming to town. Great pass. Selyus lays it in. Assist to TJ Long. They do such a great job just flipping it and then slipping and going right to the basket. Here's Kispert with the left hand. Right now, if I'm Gonzaga, I'm looking to get downhill. But more importantly, I'm trying to get stops. And, and they... They've got seven minutes here in a one possession game. They got to string together like just two or three stops in a row and flip the pressure on to BYU. Toulson down low. Celius this time. Gonzaga defended that a little bit better. But he will score anyway. And he puts his hand down saying that Gilder's too small for him. Huh. <laughs> I wouldn't point that out if I were him. I'd want to keep that matchup going. But he's right. <laughs> Kispert whips it back to Petrushev. Offensive foul. Well, they're pointing to that restricted arc, and they're going to change the call. Larry Spaulding helped David Hall out. He was watching the feet of the help defender, so that's not going to be a charge. It's going to be a block. By this officiating crew finding that out and fixing it. 
I mean, the BYU fans, players, coaches are just going nuts. Mark Pope's got to be careful. You can't get a technical. Nice, not going to get a technical. <laughs> this is fun. This is, is what makes our job so fantastic. Now, the intensity in this game is just tremendous. And Gonzaga, give them credit. I mean, they're not number two for no reason. Maybe number one come Monday if they can win this game. Both free throws good. Sort of probing, got inside and flips one up. No good, but Childs was there with the smaller man on him and he took advantage. So it's great positioning getting to the weak side. Mark Pope is really close to getting a technical right now. His assistants just had to come up and try to say, Coach, we got to let that one go and go on to the next play. I give Larry Spalding credit for not calling the technical. He could have. Gilder three, too strong, wide open, and the ball is knocked away. But that's a foul against Petrusha. Toulson will go to the free throw line. And Killian Tilly's checking back in with four fouls. This has been wild. the second <laughs> 18 for Jake Toulson <laughs> well you got to get that stuff right hey you know what here's what I really credit the assistant coaches for Mark Field they're the ones that alerted him brought it to his attention that is a great job by the coaching staff Elselius <laughs> who does not lack for personality Made that one. He'll try to make the second. Or mustache style. He makes both. He's got 10. Match underneath. You got to get it to Tilly quick. Tilly gave it up to Ayayi, who got bumped. So they'll send him to the free throw line. I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of free throw shot yeah. in the final five minutes of this game. That was great awareness, though, by Killian and Tilly. Now, a lot of people aren't going to pay attention to it, but. They, they had to switch off, right? So Yoli Childs dove at him quickly. That's what alerted him, and he saw it, read it perfectly, that Ayayi was going to be open on the cut. Ayayi made both of them. It's not a huge difference in free throw percentage, but BYU has been, as a team, a better free throw shooting team. Gonzaga 68% for the year. Maybe one small offensive weakness for this Gonzaga team. Over the top, Childs got double team. Found Barcelo, open three. That one goes down. His first point of the night. Tilly got fouled. Celius got knocked. Well, and here, we've got people throwing things on the floor, and you cannot have things being thrown on the floor in any game. Yeah, you, you cannot do that. They have just been warned, the student section. So next time it could be a technical foul. Well, you and I have been here before <laughs> when things have gotten out of hand with the crowd. Stuff thrown onto the court. Tilly made them both. 
18 for Killian Tilly and the free throw line is keeping Gonzaga in this game. And they put Timmy back in, kind of protecting Killian Tilly here with the under four media timeout. Saves him at least one possession defensively with the foul trouble he's in. I'd bring the double right away. I don't want Yoli Childs having any chance to get downhill. T.J. Hawes for three. Good! But Timmy's just laying back too much. Gilder got it rejected by Childs. Senior night, final regular season game of the year in the WCC. Gonzaga ball down nine with under four to play. Tilly back in the game. You were right, it was a short rest. Well, they need to get Kispert down the stretch here. Oh, one of eight from beyond the arc. You pointed that out during the break. Sometimes to beat a team that's as highly ranked as Gonzaga is and that's efficient, these are the shots that have to go down. I mean, he's had a lot of good looks, and now he's one for nine. That was a good look. Tulsa almost fumbled the ball away. Fantastic effort tonight. Good by both teams. I mean, yeah. this has just been high-level basketball. That was a good hustle play by Kispert. Childs lays it in. <laughs> Till he found Gilder, no foul. And Mark Few. I think it's kind of sensing what's about to happen here. This team, trailing by 11, not executing with the level of Christmas that we've seen at the offensive end. BYU has been really dialed in defensively. Childs missed it. Don't stop if you're Wolverines. You want to get all the way into the paint there. He did, but the ball was sort of deflected. Tilly for three. That one's too strong. Long rebound. And a yay, great hustle play came up with the ball. Here's Woolridge. He did not get fouled. A yay missed the shot. Loose ball. Gilder had it blocked by Childs. Celius rips it away. Under two to go. It's a foul. I hope what we're hearing here, that you're hearing at home, they're already getting ready to storm the court. The students are already... They got to worry about keeping everybody safe. What a moment. And one last reminder. Big Monday, Louisville, Florida State, huge game in the ACC, 7 Eastern on Monday on ESPN. It'll stream on the app at 9 Eastern in the Big 12, Kansas. And it looks like the Jayhawks may well be number one come Monday night against Oklahoma State at home. Mark Pope has done a tremendous job in year one here. Dave Rose is a big part of this roster being what it is. But Mark Pope and the way that he has coached them up and put them into his possession to have this night on senior night. Remember when T.J. Hawes came out of high school?
the expectations were through the roof. He's been criticized at points and times over the course of his collegiate career to have what's going to happen here in about a minute. It's special. Chris Burgess is smiling. Team against St. Mary's. 40 in a row. They've won 39 straight conference road games. They've won 19 straight overall true road games. Listen, it's an amazing streak. And it is so hard to do what Mark Few and the Gonzaga Bulldogs have done. That's what makes what BYU has accomplished here tonight so impressive. Really impressive. What a night for BYU. Their first ranked game since joining this league. Some people thought BYU was just going to dominate the WCC. It's taken them a long time to have a moment like this. All I'm going to say is we're going to let you enjoy the final 25 seconds. Just be safe because these students are about to rush this floor and there's 5,000 of them. And I think Mark Pope wants a timeout. He's going to let his seniors get an ovation on senior night. He's also going to get Dalton Nixon in the game, who's hurt, and let him get an ovation. You gave him the thumbs up. Hey, here's the thing, though. Where Gonzaga's locker room is located is going to be right through these students. Yeah. I hope that they have a plan to get Gonzaga off this floor quickly. I got a lot of police officers who are ready to help protect Gonzaga players. So the inbound the ball, the shot clock violation. Nixon will come out, and so will the rest of the seniors. Getting ready for what's about to happen. What a moment on senior night. It is special. It is emotional. And Mark, P Mark Pope can finally smile. A signature win in year one for the head coach. And BYU's legit. They're good. Kispert for three. Way off the mark. Kind of like most of his night from the outside. Horn sounds. Here we go. 